We're going to spend some time reflecting on the significance of Jesus' death on the cross. And we're going to start by exploring a feature of Jesus' account of the crucifixion that's often passed over, but which is quite significant. Mark records that when Jesus breathed his last, the temple curtain was torn in two. In the temple in Jerusalem, there was a big curtain, a thick curtain, that separated two spaces. It separated a room known as the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. The Holy of Holies was the place where God was believed to be present. It represented the dwelling place of God himself. And the Jews believed that the only person who was ever permitted to go through that curtain into the Holy of Holies was the high priest. And then he was only permitted to do so once a year. That curtain represented the, the separateness of God. It represented the idea that God is inaccessible unless sacrifices are made. Because if a high priest offers sacrifices on behalf of the people, then and only then is he able to go into God's presence on behalf of the people. Now Mark says that when Jesus died, that curtain was torn in two. That curtain was ripped apart. There was no longer a separation between God's presence and the people. And that says something about access. It says something about the idea that it's no longer necessary for people to offer sacrifices to come into God's presence. It's no longer needful to go through various rituals in order to know God. God is now accessible in a way that he was not previously accessible. Something new has come about in the way that humans are able to relate to God. Now, all of that's a little bit of background. Let's think about various ways of thinking about the significance of the cross. One way of thinking about the significance of the cross uh, is based on the image of the temple. Now, the temple represented a place where Jews could go and offer animal sacrifices. And they believed that when the blood of these animals was spilt, that that was making it possible for them to be forgiven of their sin and come into right relationship with God. Christians today believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he died as a sacrifice. His blood was shed so that anyone who believes in Jesus could have their sin forgiven and come into right relationship with God. And that's why Christians will never offer sacrifices. That's why Christians have never offered sacrifices over 2,000 years of church history. They believe there's no need for the blood of animals to be spilt because Jesus has died as the perfect sacrifice, making it possible for anyone to be forgiven of their sins. The second image uh, is that of the battlefield. This is associated with another understanding of the cross. And it goes like this. When Jesus died on the cross, he won a great battle. He won a victory over sin and death and Satan, so that anyone who believes in Jesus can be free of those things. The next way of understanding of the cross is based on the image of the marketplace. If you went into the marketplace in the ancient world, you'd see the buying and selling of slaves going on. And if someone was in slavery, it was possible for them to be released from slavery if someone came along and paid a ransom price. A ransom in the ancient world was a price paid to secure the release of a slave. If you were a slave and someone paid your ransom, that meant you were free. And Christians believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the ransom price so that human beings could be free from sin and death and Satan. Another way of thinking about the cross is in terms of substitution. And this concept of substitution is most familiar, of course, from sports. It's the idea that 
one person is playing on pitch and then they're taken off pitch and the substitute comes on and takes their place. And Christians will typically talk about the cross in this way. They'll say that when Jesus died on the cross, he died as our substitute. He died on the cross in our place. It should have been us dying there. We deserved to die on the cross. We deserve punishment for all the wrong things that we have thought, said and done. But because Jesus died on the cross as our substitute, that means that we can be free from punishment. That means that we can be in right relationship with God and he looks at us as people who are free from sin and completely righteous in his sight. That word righteous is a typical term, meaning that in God's eyes, it's as if we've never done anything wrong. We're in the right with God. We're in right relationship with him. So then we've got four different ways of thinking about the significance of Jesus's death on the cross. We've got the image of the temple that speaks of Jesus's death as a sacrifice. We've got the image of a battlefield that speaks of Jesus's death as a victory. We've got the image of a marketplace that speaks of Jesus's death as a ransom. And finally, we've got this image of a sports match that speaks of Jesus's death as a substitute. 